Well, folks, my next guest was a duly elected member of provincial parliament here in Ontario. And then he became kind of a quasi-political prisoner here in his own province. Absolutely spectacular. Yes, I'm speaking of none other than Randy Hillier. And we want to touch upon two things. One is his ongoing constitutional challenge. And the other is a boycott that Mr. Hillier is supporting in terms of Canadians donating their blood, donating their organs, in light of an absolutely egregious tragedy that occurred, thanks again to the medical establishment. So without further ado, let's welcome Randy aboard. Hey, Randy, how are you doing this summer? Well, it's a pleasure to be chatting with you again, David. And uh, summer is good, and uh, we are... uh thriving in the dystopia world called Canada right at the moment. Uh, But we're continuing to fight, and there's lots of fights yet to be had. Yeah, I think the last time I physically saw you, Randy, it was about two years ago in the People's Republic of Peterborough. Um, I, I believe you got ticketed, Maxime Bernier got ticketed, I got ticketed, I saw the police officer's notes, I was seen laughing and shaking hands in public. <laughs> I am not making this up. By the way, what happened to your tickets uh, in Peterborough at that so-called uh, illegal gathering? Well, I, I still have about 10 uh, provincial fences uh, mm. remaining. Uh, most of them are on hold until this week's constitutional matter is heard in the Superior Court in Toronto. And, and let me just... Uh, preface this a little bit, David, for your audience. For over a year now, the Crown has agreed that my constitutional challenge would be heard in an open court, in person, and it would uh, be held in the Superior Court. Late last week, I got notified that the Ontario courts are instituting a shadow ban on my hearing. Uh, so shadow bans, your audience will be well, well aware, we, it's a term that we often use with social media. However, uh, they unilaterally and arbitrarily decided that my court hearing would only be done virtually on Thursday, July 26th and Friday, July 27th. Uh, and there can be no mistake in anybody's mind. What they wanted to do was to make sure that I did not have a public forum um, where people and my supporters and others could attend an open court, hear the arguments. Uh, These are strong, incredible arguments that are being advanced. If we're successful, it will do away with not only the rest of my provincial offenses, but do away with all offenses under the... um, reopening Ontario Act across Ontario and hopefully also have great impact in other jurisdictions as well. But but the courts... And Randy, if, wisdom, I can, if I can just jump in here and ask you, did your counsel seek to have an in-person court hearing? I, I was in court uh, twice uh, last month and I actually requested that and I was granted that to have the other parties come in physically to the courthouse uh, so the question is, did they ask for that? And uh, whether they did or not, what do you think is the ostensible policy reason of making sure this is virtual? Is it simply just to, as you said earlier, uh, keep interested Canadians uh, away from seeing the, the arguments they're going to present in court? Not only did we request it, the Crown had agreed to it, David. Ah. For over a year the Crown had agreed that it would be in person, that it would be at the main courthouse on University Avenue in Toronto, and it would be in the Superior Court of Justice. Um, So there is no justifiable reason to not have in-person court hearings. Uh, None of the courts have any mandates against uh, vaccines or or masks, or social distancing, or any of that matter. Like, that has been dispensed with in our courts. So what is the real excuse for them to not 
have to to at the last minute decide no we're going to change this and and you can be certain that had i been down in toronto in an open court there would have been some media attention the public would have been there as well and one cannot come to any other conclusion reasonable conclusion that the courts and the government wanted to implement something akin to a shadow ban on this constitutional proceeding um, and make it so that few people understand what is going on. Wow. I, you know, Randy, I'm detecting a, a bit of a, I don't know, a vendetta here, maybe some vindictiveness. I, I'm looking for the silver lining. You, you call it a shadow ban. At least they didn't ask for a publication ban. Uh, so this can actually uh, be publicized uh, after the fact. Um, what is the argument? What is the main argument uh, that your council is going to make on Thursday, Randy? Well, there, there's many. We've got arguments on the health. We've got arguments on the mental health. And we also have, uh, you know, as you know, David, I was an elected representative at that time. The um, and we also can say with certainty the Constitution regards the freedom of expression, freedom of mobility, peaceful assembly as foundational and fundamental rights not to be infringed upon without justification. And the infringement has to be proportional. The The two cases that are being heard on uh, Thursday and Friday are when Doug Ford's government instituted a complete stay-at-home order where people were not permitted to leave their home unless they met one of the government's predetermined criteria, such as uh, getting necessary health care, uh, going for groceries, etc. Uh, as an elected representative, how can you possibly expect that other foundational element of our constitution, a, a representative democracy, function if you prohibit elected representatives from leaving their house and talking with constituents or meeting with constituents or meeting with stakeholders. Uh, these are uh, fundamental violations. Uh, and uh, I, I think the government recognizes that they've got themselves in a bit of a pickle on this one. Um, you know, the arguments are extensive. Yeah, they can't be given justice in uh, a five or 10 minute interview. That's why it's being held over two days mm -hmm. to hear these arguments in the Superior Court. Mm -hmm.